Well, 10 more counties in our state can now apply for phase two of the governor's four phase recovery plan. Each is highlighted in orange here on your map. The counties in blue are already in the second phase of that reopening. So the state looking more colorful this morning. That means restaurants, retail and salons are open in limited capacity. Look, we, we this is really something we ought to feel good about in the state of Washington. Uh, the ability of people going back to work, the ability of people going back to restaurants uh, after this most difficult time of economic anxiety and, and social distress. To be able to move forward like this is really something that is something uh, to celebrate. Um, and we ought to do that. But I, I do want to just put my oar in the water on this issue that we do have to still recognize that uh, we've made progress, but we're just so far from being out of the woods. Now, the governor expressed optimism for larger counties reopening like King, Pierce, and Snohomish, but did not give a date for when the entire state will move into phase two. Well, the city of Kent is the latest city to announce some layoffs as it struggles with the financial fallout from the pandemic. The city says it has a $15.7 million revenue shortfall. According to a memo obtained by King 5, the city plans to lay off or retire 11 employees. Kent will also freeze or eliminate a handful of vacant positions. Other cities like Tacoma, Issaquah, Edmonds and Mercer Island also facing similar cuts. In a lot of ways, coronavirus has changed the way our society operates forever and for businesses. That means adapting for the future or close your doors. The University of Washington Foster School of Business is now launching a workshop for business owners coming to grips with that new re reality. Before Pilates classes happened here in her living room, Erica Shepard hosted small and large groups here at the Pilates Company in Woodenville. COVID-19 forced them to close on March 15th, but on the 16th, to keep the business going, they took classes to the internet. I've had a lot of people say to me, you should be doing stuff online. This was kind of the kick in the rear to, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> Erica's first cool. video shoot. Shepard says the personal interaction with yeah. students is key, but today expanding online is making her realize students are not just local, they can be global. There's this world now. I've got people from New Jersey, California. Um, I had a friend who was, who was tuning in from Dublin. Now everybody's habits have changed. Jeffrey Schulman is one of a group of professors now holding workshops at the University of Washington to help businesses prepare for the new world ahead. He says it's important owners embrace all the changes so they can survive now, um, but thrive so later. Think about how you use your, your cash and, and how you take on debt. Uh, think about what space you use. Uh, think about how you reach customers and even think about what your product is and how you could change that. Maybe it's just an adjustment like FaceTime browsing happening at Book Larder in Seattle or permanently being able to order a chef made to go meal on demand from your favorite restaurant. So we're going to see more and more businesses close, um, but then those that survive uh, have a chance to really grow. And some of the changes Shepard was forced to make at the Pilates company will stick around even after the studio eventually reopens. You know, if I look at it as more of a silver lining opportunity, okay, this isn't isn't too bad. You know, we'll have to figure out how to balance this now with that. A lot of businesses thinking about that. What changes are going to stick around in your workplace? Will you have employees sit next to each other anymore? Would you work from home? Will businesses cut way back on travel? A lot of things to consider. If you're interested in this UW workshop for businesses now underway, we've set up a link for you. Text the word workshop to 206-448-4545. We'll send you that link. Well, Power Alley Fitness in Arlington has closed its doors after being warned about violating the governor's order. The gym says it closed to avoid fines and will file a counter lawsuit later. The state has also warned Northwest Fitness Company in Puyallup to close or face a lawsuit and fines too. An investigator reportedly, quote, observed people in the gym were working without observing social distancing or wearing masks. Opinions in Puyallup are split about the gym opening. We were like very proud of them to take a stand against, um, we call him Dictator Inslee. And it's almost kind of an irony that they're gonna protest at their own risk of contracting the virus. I mean, how does that make sense? 
So the company has a sign now posted on its doors that says it will remain closed for now. If you've been laid off, it could be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Experts say new opportunities are out there, though, and many people are using this time to pivot their careers. Xi'an Xi'an is a career coach and says she's seeing a lot of folks wanting a change after finally having some time to examine their goals. The numbers may seem bleak, but Xi'an says the jobs are out there. The key is using downtime to really think about your goals, be intentional in your search, and prioritize your needs might be something you've never done that you're not used to, to having to make your own decisions intentionally and thoughtfully outside of your career track. And so it's really shaking up a lot of folks. Xi'an says a lot of her clients are getting opportunities in fields like tech, creative PR, and healthcare. Well, nearly 1,300 National Guard members are working on the front lines of the coronavirus crisis in Washington, but after answering the call to duty for so many weeks, they may not get the federal benefits like early retirement and discounted college tuition. King 5's Ted Land shows us why. This is one of the places where the Washington National Guard has been working since the early days of the pandemic. They're helping distribute emergency food boxes here at Food Lifeline and across the state. The federal government ordered them to the front lines and because they're putting in the time and effort, they're entitled to federal benefits. But there's growing concern they won't get those benefits. This video shot by the Washington National Guard shows the work they're doing, including food relief and helping track down people who may have been exposed to the virus. National Guard members who deploy for at least 90 days under federal orders are entitled to early retirement and money to help pay for a college education. But Political reports the Trump administration is planning to end deployments in late June, right before that 90-day mark, meaning thousands of National Guard members would not get benefits. The Washington National Guard tells me it has about 1,300 members on federal orders working on the coronavirus response. About a quarter of them started in late March and would hit the 90-day mark in late June. They and the others who started later would all miss out on early retirement and education benefits if the president decides to end deployments in June. That seems really uh, unfair to these hardworking people. So we hope that that gets uh, revisited, and I talked to the dele delegation this morning. I assume the administration is gonna, going to be hearing uh, a lot from a lot of people about this subject. The Washington National Guard tells me it's working with the state's congressional delegation to try and get those federal deployments extended, if only by a few weeks, so members can get those benefits. A National Guard spokesperson told Politico a decision to extend the deployments could be made in the coming weeks. In Seattle, Ted Land, King 5 News. 438 now, and it looks like COVID-19 could make a bad wildfire season even worse. Social distancing is limited training. Instead of learning hands-on, firefighters are learning online. And to make matters worse, the state says the stay-home order has increased the number of fires in Washington. People are staying home. They are staying safe. They have time on their hands, and they are doing uh, yard work. And unfortunately, they are burning those debris piles and they're getting uh, out of control. Public Lands Commissioner Hillary frowns there. The state will rely on air support, she says, more than ever before. Well, the Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad, it's shutting down for good. American Heritage Railways, Inc. says it's because of the pandemic and it can no longer fund operations in Mineral Washington. That means all future events and train excursions are canceled. It says several staff members are also getting let go. It's not clear if this will also impact the logging museum that is also affiliated with the Mount Rainier Railroad. Snohomish County Pride is also canceled this summer. It was set to happen on June 13th. Organizers posted on Facebook saying they're canceling because of safety. They are hoping that this will allow organizations and businesses to redirect their resources to people who need the help right now during this pandemic.